Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into a critical topic that impacts industries worldwide, especially process industries like oil and gas and petrochemical. The intersection of the functional safety and the cyber security. We rely on a complex system to keep our world running and crucially to keep people safe. But in an increasingly connected world, are these vital systems truly protected? We will explore why the standards like IEC 61511 now mandate considering cyber security and how integrating functional safety and a cyber security can build a more resilient future. Think about the recent events. Ransomware attacks like War and Cry and NotPetya have highlighted just how vulnerable our critical infrastructure can be. The number of malware attacks has risen exponentially over the last 10 years and yet companies have not uh, been acted on it and uh, they are very slow to react on it. In the process industry, a cyber-related incident compromising control valve and a safety system can have a devastating consequences. It is no longer a theoretical risk. It's a present danger and that's why standards are evolving. The update to IEC 61511 in 2016 now includes a cyber security assessment for a safety instrumented system. This means companies can no longer delay reviewing their SIS for the cyber vulnerabilities. Ignorance may feel like a bliss until um, your system or network and a plan become compromised. So let's break down the key system we are talking about. First, distributed control system. These are the foundational technologies that supervise and control industrial processes, ensuring seamless operation by monitoring variables like pressure, temperature and the flow rate. They distribute control across various subsystems, enhancing scalability, reducing the risk of the single point failures. Um, they provide operators with a real time of data and for their uh, decision making. DCS ensures optimal production and a process quality. Next is the safety instrumented system, SIS. These are explicitly designed to prevent the hazardous event. They work independently of the primary control system taking corrective actions when predefined safety thresholds are breached. SIS focuses on safeguarding personnel, asset and the environment. They add a vital layer of protection in a high-risk environment like oil refineries, offshore platforms and gas processing plants. Integrating DCS and SIS allows for efficient management of both routine operation and the emergency scenarios. In industries like oil and gas, where even a minor deviation can lead to the catastrophic consequences, this integration is critical. Now, what is the functional safety in this context? It refers to the ability of the system, DCS and SIS, to detect, respond to and mitigate failures that could result in unsafe condition. In the oil and gas industry, Functional safety ensures that the industrial processes operate within the safe limit, reducing the likelihood of the incidents such as explosion, fire or toxic gas release. Functional safety is not just about the compliance. It's central to operational integrity and risk management. Effective functional safety system minimize downtime from incidents, enhance reliability, protect workers and communities, and prevent costly disruptions, legal liabilities and the reputational damage. Modern standards, particularly IEC 61511 and 508, provides comprehensive guidelines for implementing functional safety. They emphasize a life cycle approach, covering everything from design and installation to maintenance and the decommissioning. Adherence ensures that the DCS and SIS are compliant and resilient against uh, evolving risk. IEC 61508 covers the functional safety of the electrical, electronic and the programmable electronic systems, while IEC 61511 specifically addresses safety instrument system for the process industries. 
Compliance with these standards are often a legal and the operational imperative. But here is the challenge. The oil and gas sector faces a growing array of emerging threat. While traditional safety methods are effective, they often fall short in addressing new challenges like uh, increased process complexity, uh, aging infrastructure, and highlighted cybersecurity risk. Cyber attacks targeting industrial control system can disturb operation, manipulate safety parameters, or disable critical system altogether. The integration of the industrial Internet of Things devices while improving efficiency has introduced new vulnerabilities that attackers can exploit. This brings us to our first question for you. In your opinion, what is the single biggest emerging threat in the safety and industrial facilities today? Aging infrastructure, process complexity, or cyber threats? Let us know in the comments below. Let's dig a bit deeper into the current challenges. The industry operates with the high pressure system, flammable materials and the volatile chemicals. Minor deviation can lead to catastrophic outcomes. DCS and SIS are tasked with mitigating this risk, but their effectiveness can be hindered. Hardware and software malfunctions are a significant concern. Uh, failures can come from uh, manufacturing defects, improper maintenance, or extreme environmental condition. Even a brief malfunction can escalate quickly in a safety critical scenarios. Operator errors, misjudgment, and insufficient training can compromise system reliability. Delayed or incorrect response to alarm worsens in hazardous situation. Poorly designed user interface can lead to misinterpretation of the data. While standards like IEC 61511 and 508 are robust, their application and reinforcement can be inconsistent. Their uh, generic nature can leave ambiguity to specific industry scenarios. Compliance is resource intensive and smaller operators might lack the resource or expertise. Standards may not adequately account for rapid involving threats like cybersecurity. Many facilities still use legacy systems, not designed for modern safety requirements. These are still robust and resilient, and maintaining them is a challenge due to the expensive parts and the limited expertise. As systems expand, processes become more intricate. Managing this requires advanced system capabilities and um, real-time monitoring, diagnosis, and automated responses, which is technically and financially demanding to integrate into existing systems. Modern systems generate vast amount of data, which operator may struggle to interpret, leading to delays in critical decisions. Poorly designed interface can overwhelm operators. This complex threat landscape means traditional safety approaches are no longer sufficient on their own. Cybersecurity can no longer be an afterthought. It must be a critical component of the modern safety practices. Since the standard for functional safety IEC 61511 and the cyber security IEC 62443 both follow a similar three-phase life cycle, it makes sense to consider these two together. This means being as a vigilant and a cyber security with the functional safety. An integrated life cycle approach will help us mitigating the risk. So how we can enhance functional safety in this new environment, especially by integrating cyber security? These are game changers. They enhance predictive and analytical capabilities, helping identifying anomalies and potential failure before they escalate. AI algorithms can analyze large data volume to detect subtile patterns. AI models learn from historical data and improve prediction accuracy of risk assessment and the failure prevention. Modern tools provide deeper insight into the component health. They help detect and address issues like wear, calibration errors, or uh, degraded performance, and ensuring peak efficiency and reducing the unplanned shutdown. These are the virtual replicas, mirroring real-time system behavior. They allow simulation, monitoring, and optimization without disturbing actual operations. And safety scenarios can be tested under various conditions to evaluate system responses and ideally um, vulnerabilities. 
This is powered by AI and IoT sensor. Uh, this uses real-time data to predict when maintenance is needed. It reduces the likelihood of failure that could compromise safety while optimizing resources. Facilitated by the advanced sensors and IoT. This allows collection and analysis of data in real time. Operators get up-to-date information all the time and alerts allow swift action to prevent unsafe condition. It also enable continuous compliance by immediate uh, detecting deviations. Multiple layers of security protect critical system. This includes firewall, intrusion detection system, and secure communication protocol to prevent unauthorized access. Regular software update and patches are essential to address vulnerabilities. Isolating safety critical system from non-essential network reduces the spread of the threat. Secure zones from DCS and the SIS can be created. Then, the role-based permission and the multi-factor authentication limit who can interact with the safety critical components. Human errors are significant vulnerability. Educating staff on cybersecurity best practices reduces breach risk. Integrated into strategies, these systems monitor network traffic and identify suspicious activities for faster response. Anomaly detection can flag unusual patterns indicating an attack. Eliminating or minimizing hazards at the design stage. This could mean selecting a resilient materials for a harsh environments. DCS and SIS must remain independent to avoid common cause failures. If DCS fail, SIS must remain unaffected and able to act, for example, emergency shutdown. Design must accommodate challenges in operations without compromising performance. Modular designs that integrate new tech, sensors, and processes seamlessly are needed. Incorporating multiple layer of protections ensures failure do not lead to the catastrophes. Redundant components like sensors or processors provide backups. Triple modular redundancy TMR use these parallel units for critical applications. Systems default to save state upon malfunction. Valves might close automatically on power loss. And systems are programmed to initiate control shutdowns for abnormal conditions. Crucial for reliability and the compliance. Covers hazard risk analysis during the design phase, verification and validation during the deployment, and ongoing maintenance, testing, inspection during operations, and decommissioning. Periodic proof test of SIS component confirms reliability. Finally, human factor. Training and compliance are non-negotiable. Skilled personnel are essential. Comprehensive training on system complexities, interpreting data, responding to alarms, and emergency protocols is needed. Certification programs like those from TUV, Reunland, or Exceda ensure professionals meet global competency standard. Certified personnel bring added assurance. Adherence to the standard like IEC 61508 and IEC 61511 is a systematic process. Audits by certified bodies ensure alignment and uh, regulatory frameworks often mandate compliance and making it a uh, legal and the operational requirement. So are your safety and a control system truly protected? Protecting them requires a holistic approach. It is not just about functional safety anymore. It's about uh, integrating functional safety with the robust cybersecurity measures. Adopting innovative technologies like AI, machine learning, digital twin, and predictive maintenance enhances reliability and efficiency. Implementing key design principles like segregation, redundancy, fail-safe, and life cycle management build resilience and criticality. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos on process safety and the cyber security. For more information and the resources, check the links in the description.
including information from Exida and the research journal I referenced. Thank you.